Okay. I'm glad to see you guys here there today, though. I'm starting to record just so you're aware. And um, oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to record. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about collaborating with your special education teacher on the ELA instruction and that alignment piece to wonders and wonder works. Uh, this is my note to record, and we're recording. Okay, so same norms as always. Take care of your needs. Be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe. And uh, make sure you can mute your microphone. Uh, turning on your camera is great. Makes makes me help helps me to see friendly faces. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, type it in the chat, and I will do my very. I'm fine. I'll do my very best to to look to answer them. All right. So as always, everything we do works from this framework. And the intentions today is I'm learning to collaborate with colleagues to support the curriculum continuum of wonders with WonderWorks. And the success criteria is I know I'm successful when I have a plan to collaborate with and build curriculum coherence for my students in special education. So this falls on the responsibilities of both parties, gen ed and special ed. The three areas that I'm gonna go over tonight are reviewing the instructional guide, sharing the class and unpacking our units. So when we did the curriculum instructional guides, I know I said wrong one, instructional guides this year with Wonders, it was exciting to, for the first time to have WonderWorks there as well. So it was the first time that special ed was in that instructional guide. And the way it's done, they show during the Wonders training, um, just has at the bottom of each unit there what it is that the special education is doing as well. I have created a, a second guide option that um, special ed teachers can use, gen ed teachers can use. And what it is, it's right here on your instructional guide page. And it just says um, special education. I can't see over my own screen. Scroll it up. There it is, um, the special education. Um, so this is the exact same instructional guide, but laid out for visually for um, consideration of special ed and looking at what it looks like side by side with each other. So for example, if I go to the second grade, WonderWorks, um, I just noticed that typo. Um, <laughs> you can see it looks the same there in the beginning. And when we turn inside, we have, here's the example of tech set one. The purple are all the things that we share in gen ed and special education. We have the same essential question. We have the same vocabulary. And this is where it's a little different. I have aligned wonders next to wonder works so that you can go ahead and see where, um, what, what we're doing in special ed versus what's happening in the gen ed classroom. You can see the parts that we don't do and how ours look different. So we always have an interactive read aloud like gen ed does um, in this case, but it's a different story. And then with the shared read, we always have the same story just at a different Lexio level with some additional vocabulary that our students may need to help build their comprehension. We don't have an anchor text and we don't have paired reading. Those are parts that will always just happen in the general education classroom. And then leveled readers. We, you all in gen ed also have leveled readers, but it hasn't been the priority this year. There's so much in this curriculum that we've really tried it through the district to give you as much as anyone can handle, right? As best we can. But in special ed, leveled readers are an important piece of the WonderWorks program. And then you can also see that we also have writing as well. And the writing that we do is a much smaller portion of the writing instruction than, than what's happening in the gen ed classroom. So if you think about it, the kids both need, you know, the opportunity to learn in, in both of those locations um, for their success. All right, let me flip back to my bite-sized PD. So gen ed and special ed share the essential questions and vocab, the interactive read aloud and the shared reads we both have. Um, the difference is, really that only gen ed has that anchor text and paired reading and um, level readers are really a big part of the wonder works. And again, both have writing, special ed, it will not be as in depth as gen ed in part because the students are learning those basic skills. And um, any questions on that instructional guide piece before I go to the next section? 
Did I introduce myself? I'm Michelle Edom, teacher specialist with special education. Just realized some people might not know who I am, which is fine. I don't expect anyone to know who I am. Sorry, guys, I just have thinly faces on there. So I assume I, uh, you know, am known. Okay. Um, so no questions on that instructional guide piece. So we can go ahead and talk about sharing. Now, um, the technology piece is still getting worked out. Um, the special ed teachers are now getting access to wonders and they are still trying to get their WonderWorks access. So some of this is hypothetical of where we're going in the future because we don't have all the technology pieces lined up just yet still. Um, I have worked with Nate, the director of special ed. He is working on that with me. Um, and we've talked about it again today. So we're doing our best. Um, what will happen as we have uh, the technology set up in both places is that, the, is that the general ed teachers will share their classroom with the special education teacher. This allows us access to your calendar. It allows us access to the data for the students that we share. And, um, and, and, and they could get a lot, right? If there's four grade levels, if there's, I'm sorry, if there's four teachers in a grade level, I might have four calendars shared with me. So the special education teacher is going to need to consider if there's one teacher that sort of is staying like on their calendar really well, maybe that's the one that they're going to look at in order to follow the pacing of what's happening in that grade level. It would be very difficult to look at four class level four classes in six grade levels, right? So um, it will help them to follow that calendar. And the purpose of the calendar is just to stay within that window of the instructional guide that we're working on it on the same kind of time. Um, they won't, the, 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 gen, the special ed teachers are not going to be able to, um, they're not gonna match day for day what you're doing because ours looks different. Um, but we are addressing the same essential question and the same vocabulary. And you saw that there's some stories we have that are similar or the same, but we'll also we're working on our own stories that are aligned with what's happening in that gen ed classroom. And um, I just, some of the feedback I've had is um, gen ed teachers asking the sped teacher to pre-teach a little bit more or come back and post-teach a little bit, or in our class, we're gonna do this one and we've changed and we're not doing that anymore. It makes it really difficult for a special ed teacher running sixth grade levels to, to try to manage that. So the way we manage it is to work within the framework of that instructional guide looking at your calendar and trying to maintain pacing so that the student benefits from that continuum of curriculum of what's happening in gen ed and what's happening in special ed. And again, this will be really great once we can actually do it. So that'll be fantastic. Uh, questions right now on sharing that I can answer? Okay. All right, and then um, unpacking units. This can be a challenge, uh, again, as a special ed teacher, when you have six different grade levels that you're trying to support. Um, one of the things I always tried to do is when a team was getting together to unpack the next unit, whether that was math or reading, to try to be there with them for a part of that conversation if possible. That's not always possible. So just because of the scheduling of everything. So if it's possible to include that SPED teacher, that would be really helpful. And then as you're unpacking those units, just keep in consideration the needs of the students, which I know that you're doing anyway, but it might be something because we are pulling them out of the classroom more than we were previously, that you might need to be a little bit more aware of than you had to at times past when they were just gone during SBI when everyone else was gone. So you might wanna consider when you're teaching some pieces based on when kids are out of the classroom. Um, when we're unpacking those, think about what the barriers are for your students and what scaffolds can be put into place to support the students um, and thinking about what they're missing when they're in that resource room. So with, um, I'm not having a stroke, I'm having a thought. <laughs> um, so, um, when you're when you're thinking about it or you're not sure what's coming up, you can talk to the teacher. You can reach out to your special ed teacher too and say like, this is a tricky thing coming up. How can we help them? Wonders and Wonderworks has phenomenal uh, scaffolding embedded that you'll be able to access in order to have great scaffolds available for your classroom. And it's still a lot to learn. 
But if you're going into something and you're like, wow, this story is like so outside the realm of anything my kids have done before, you know, what am I going to need to do in this class to help make sure that they're ready for this? Or there's a bigger um, writing activity coming up. And I know that the kids out during part of the time when I'm doing writing, I might want to think about how can I go back into um wait for them to come back from resource sometimes to do that. So you have that uh, teacher agility in special in gen ed, much more so than the special ed team has when their schedules are so packed with when kids are coming and going. Um, another piece that's come up this year in conversations has been assessments. Uh, I know traditionally, um, whether it's right, wrong, or other, a lot of times special ed students are taking their classroom to assessments in the special ed classroom in part because of that smaller classroom size or having a tests and things read to them. I know from my understanding, ISD is really focused on those formative assessments more than the curriculum, like the computer-based assessments that are there. We're trying to really have them, have you all focus on like what's, what's happening as you're learning this program and the students are learning and doing formative assessments. Um, when, especially a teacher is providing a space and reading a test to a student, that's not specially designed instruction. That is providing accommodations. And the truth is anybody can do that. Anyone in that building can provide the accommodations of a small test, small place, a small small group location, um, or having a test or read allowed to them. And so many of them are already built in with the audios that um, I'd like Jenna teachers just to consider how you can bring that back into your classrooms because that time that they're providing um, testing for a student is not actually um, per, counting as their minutes because it's just providing those accommodations. So um, as you're thinking about your assessments, just try to keep that in mind. And I know that that's a shift for some people in considering how you're doing that. Um, and it's okay. <laughs> that's my big message, everyone. It's just gonna be okay. Um, they, the students are gonna miss more portions of general education than they have in the past. And that is because we are looking at that simple view of reading and making sure that we have both sides, the word reading piece of that PLL or the 95% um, portion, and then Wonders and Wonder Works for the reading comprehension piece. This is the time that uh, we are bringing them out of the classroom more than we ever have before because we have really great resources for that. And so it's okay, they will miss things and that's okay. Um, they also should not be held accountable for work missed due to special education instruction. We're not double dipping on kids that because they missed something, now you have to come back and make that up. That would be unfair to that student who's already trying to work more hard than, who's working harder than a lot of your students are. So just take that into consideration how you weave them back in and out of your classroom and what things you can let go for them because you know that they are working for that additional hour when they're in special education or 30 minutes, however long they're in there. Um, students in special ed, a, a student gets into special ed because there's an indicator that they can't access general education curriculum without specially designed instruction, without that special education support. So this is where, if a student is in your gen ed classroom, um, but we know that they're not able to access that independently, it's okay for them to miss that because what they're getting in the special ed classroom is that content at the level of which their instruction is. So it is okay that they miss those pieces because of what those um, needs are for the student that's driven by their IEP. Um, and this is hard. This is super hard. Um, it's hard for special ed, it's hard for gen ed. I think in special education, we've kind of rode our own boats for a long time. And 95% is still that really skill-based and WonderWorks is really grade-based language development. So we are asking for more time and that's hard on you as gen ed teachers to have that change in schedule. It's hard on the special ed teachers and increasing how much they're seeing students. And it's amazing for the kids. And already I get feedback where people are saying, oh, the kids came in my classroom today and they saw the story we were reading and they were like, oh my gosh, we already did this in my class. This is great, right? Like, I know what this story is. This is exciting. Um, and some of them might come and go, oh my gosh, I already read this story. <laughs> but they can be a different type of participant when they're reading that story again within that special ed classroom. So um, just be kind to yourself and be kind to each other and whatever you're doing and can do today is enough. And we can do more 
the next day when we have more, more practice and that's okay. Any questions for me or any input that people would like to share? All right, going once, going twice. One question, okay. So close to sold. Jennifer, do you have a question? Um, Julie put her question in the chat, I think. Oh, you guys, that's an advanced move. <laughs> some of the level stories are still tricky for some of my readers. Oh, I'm so glad that you brought that up. So remember, this is that language piece. Students don't need to be decoding it all themselves. They, you can be reading the stories to them, with them. You read a sentence, they read a sentence. They don't have those decoding skills and you can help guide them through the, um, the comprehension piece and practicing those comprehension skills. And it's gonna come back. All these topics are gonna come back time and time again. So we're 95%, we really want that mastery. Wonderworks, we want that repeated exposure to build vocabulary. So it's okay. If you are having to read it, have a short discussion and move on to the next piece because you need to, uh, because we're really working on building and exposing their vocabulary at that point. Um, if you've got kids who want to read, there's some kids who have the skills and they want to read, you could have them read parts, but uh, you can also just do modeling of good reading. I was talking to a special ed teacher today, actually, when I had shared that in a, in a previous training that they could really help students understand, I'm really focused on your comprehension at this time. So I'm gonna read the story. It's not that you can't read the story. It's not that I don't wanna hear you do great reading. I'm just gonna read the story so that we can talk about it more. And she said that when she shared that with her kids, she could see some of them go, oh, okay. I gotta to listen to the story and I gotta participate with the discussion of the story so I can focus on that versus focusing on trying to decode but they can also practice those application skills at the same time. We're good? Nope. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and then I can stay on and answer additional questions.